In this video, I'll be going over multiple ways to render out wireframes in Maya. So the first way I'll be using is um, Mental Ray. So I want to make sure my plugin is loaded. So I go to Window, Setting Preferences, Plugin Manager. So you get a window like this that pops up. I want to scroll down and make sure that Maya to MR is loaded. The other method I'll be using is the Vector Render. To scroll down, I also want to make sure Vector Render is turned on. So, here's my character's wireframes, and I want to be able to render this. A um, great way to put in your reel or your portfolio is just taking a screenshot from the viewport. This isn't like the best quality you can. So, first off, what you want to do is um, I created a shader for it. It's basically called like Lambert, and I applied my normal map to it. That's all I've done. And I typically re rename everything I can. That way, uh, it's a bit easier to deal with. So, file, head, norm. Uh, level 2D head, so I know it applies to this. The next thing I want to do is click on the shader that I want to uh, work with. You click on this little button called Input and Output Connections. You should see a node on the side, but this right here is called your shader group node. If I click a little tab on the side over here, this should be a drop down from Mental Ray. Yeah, all you need to do is turn on Enable Contour Rendering. The color right here basically uh, tells you what color is your wireframe, how transparent your wireframe is, and how thick your uh, wireframes will show. You can do by relative width or absolute width. For this one, I'd point, uh, try point 0.6. And I prefer usually having white wireframes. And I'm also going to change my color so it's a darker gray. You also notice, if I were just to hit render right now, it won't do anything. I have a normal map on, I'm still in Maya software. So let's change it to Maya, a mental ray at least. Let's render that out. So that doesn't look right. So what you want to do, let's go here. Render settings. I'm going to go to quality. I'm going to change this so it's a little bit higher quality. Production. Then I'm going to Features, scroll all the way down, under Contours. I want to enable Contour Render. I also want to have an oversample, this way I don't have aliasing upon my render. Let's do three. You can change the type of filter you want. And underneath, Draw by Property Difference. You want to do around all polyphases. Now to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the render button. And there you go, you have wires. Now let's say you think the white is too bright, you can always go back to your hypershade. Double click on your shader group node. Take this down a bit. You can even make the lines thinner, so I can do a point four instead. And render that out. The new trick with this method is that it applies a wireframe on top of your shaded model. Um, sometimes I recommend this, sometimes I don't. Um, the problem with this method is I can't composite this directly on top of another model. So my recommendation is you might want to make this unlit. So for example, that way I can do one gray render and the other just pure wires. So if I wanted to get that effect, I can go inside my shader and make this pure black. So in a render, I can simply do a lighten uh, layer pass on top. If you want to have the black wireframe, then what you might want to do is bring your color and everything up to max, to white. So now everything basically is, should be glowing. And go back to your shader group mode and change this wireframe to black. Now when I render this, I get the black on white. You also get an alpha channel with this. Now the next method I want to show you is using the Maya Vector Render. So I'm going to apply a new shader, a little Lambert, right to it. And let's just change our render to render right here to Maya Vector. You'll notice Maya Vector has its own little set of uh, checkboxes. You have different, multiple colors. I'm going to deal with single color. And you can also turn on Include Edges. So I'm going to click on Include Edges. 
Here line is about as thin as you can get, and you change how thick your edge weight is. Let's do a render and see how what happens with this. Uh, it doesn't look exactly what, like what we want. We want to be able to have the lines exactly where our faces are. So the trick for that is simply highlight all your edges, normals, harden edge, and then when I render it now, I'll get all my wires. There's another technique called ISO line. So let's say, for example, I want to be able to render this uh, with a slightly smooth detail. With my um, that way, all these edges are a bit smoother because more than likely you'll be doing that and maybe apply a neural map on top. You want to be able to show your uh, low poly wires. That's the only way to really show off what your base wires were like. If I press the number three and I render this, you should notice there's no difference. It looks exactly the same. The only thing that reads the number three is um, smooth preview option is mental ray. So let's go back to one. If I do a mesh smooth, run render this, I have the same problem. And I can't simply just select around and just go harden because it'll be showing all of these edges here. If you want to be able to show the original edges, what you do is select around the whole mesh, we're going to go create sets, quick select set. And I'm going to go right here and type out wire break. Okay. And now I'm going to go to mesh, smooth, and I can go to edit, quick select sets, wireframe. They'll select the wireframe that I had from underneath, and I go normals, harden edge. Now if I click render, I get my ISO line render. The same thing if I want to do the whole composite, I always go to my Lambert, make this pure white, render, I get my ISO line. You want the reverse, you can always take this image and just reverse it or go inside here make the edge color pure white make the color here pure black you have the opposite you also get the alpha for it